Joe Osborne, and welcome to today's edition of Welcome to My Basement. We're on today's program. We will be taking a look at the Pittsburgh Steelers and their futures betting outlook for the 2020 season. So right off the bat, let's get into it. I'm not very high on Pittsburgh coming into the season. You know, a lot of the experts, a lot of the media members, they're putting their predictions out for the 2020 NFL season, the playoff predictions. A lot of people have the Steelers penciled in for one of those wild card spots. A lot have the Steelers going over their over-under win total. I am not one of those people. So we're going to get into all those reasons why I don't like the Steelers uh, in a moment. But first, let's take a look at their odds for basically everything coming into the season. So odds to win the Super Bowl, you can get them at 40 to 1. That ties them with the Cleveland Browns for the 14th best odds. Odds to win the AFC 12 to 1 ties them with the Indianapolis Colts for the fifth best odds to win the conference. Odds to win the AFC North plus 350. That gives them the second best odds in the division. Of course, Baltimore Ravens are favored at minus 190. Maybe not a bad bet there. Here's where it gets interesting. Over under win total, different numbers depending on what books you shop at. Bet Online has them at nine and a half. I like the under on that, of course, but you got to pay for that hook. A little juicy, minus 140. A better bet, you go over to Bovada. They have the over under win total for the Steelers set at nine. I like the under. You get that at minus 105. Uh, another bet that excites me very, very much. Bet online has odds for every single team to or to not make the playoffs. Steelers, no, they will not make the playoffs. You can get that at plus 155. Uh, yes, minus 175. So I like the no. I don't like the Steelers to make the playoffs. And I like them to go under nine wins. So let's take a look at the 2019 season for Pittsburgh. And no doubt about it. Absolutely decimated by injuries on the offensive side of the ball. Ben Roethlisberger played in just two games. Their two top skill guys, James Conner, Juju Smith-Schuster, in another lineup all season, more out than in. So it wasn't a very pretty season on the offensive side of the ball for Pittsburgh. But this team, you know, despite all of that, they went 8-8, eight 3-3 and eight, three and three within the division, and almost made it into the playoffs. Not quite, though. They kind of fell apart towards the end of the year. And, you know, Big Ben is coming back here. So as a result of that, a lot of people see them getting a few extra wins. Sneaking in, I don't see it. So what's the strong point of this team? It's their defense. Last year, they really stepped up, didn't they? Fifth in points against, tied for first in yards per play allowed. And they led the league in takeaways. First overall in takeaways. So the thing to consider with that takeaway stat, though, is that... There's a lot of randomness, a lot of luck involved with takeaways. You often don't see teams have the same level of success with takeaways. You, you don't see that carry over from season to season. For example, 2018, the Steelers were 30th overall in takeaways. So a lot of luck there. Uh, and you really have to consider the competition that Pittsburgh went up against in 2019. You know, it's not their fault that they played a bunch of easy teams with bad quarterbacks. But you have to consider it. Check this out. Here's the murderer's row of quarterbacks they went up against in 2019. Andy Dalton, Phillip Rivers, who's coming off an awful season. He's getting a big pass for that. Are we sure he's better than Jacoby Brissett? Maybe we'll talk about that in another video. They went up against Ryan Fitzpatrick, Brian Hoyer, Jared Goff. I think we know the truth about Jared Goff at this point. Ryan Finley, Kyler Murray, Josh Allen, Sam Darnold, Robert Griffin III. Remember him, Robert Griffin? And, of course, they went up against uh, Baker Mayfield twice. So, you know, pretty easy to put up some good numbers against that level of quarterback. Then we take a look at when they played against teams who had good quarterbacks. They went up against Tom Brady, Russell Wilson, Jimmy G, Lamar Jackson. They go 0-4 in those games and allow an average of 27.75 points per game. So the defense may be not as good. As we think they are. You take a look at their 2020 schedule. I think they're going to play some better offenses. A better level of quarterback over the course of the season. So I don't think that they're going to be have the same level of success with takeaways. And they're going to play some better quarterbacks here. So I don't think they'll be as good this season. So let's take a look at the offensive side of the ball for Pittsburgh last year. And it's, it's kind of hard to pick on them a little bit here because of all the injuries. But you still have to point out they finished 27th points per game. 30th in rush yards per attempt. So, 
you can make a pretty good argument that uh, defensive game plan it might have been pretty easy against the Steelers last year due to Duck Hodges and Mason Rudolph at quarterback. You know, you could maybe just game plan around stopping the rush, and maybe that's why they were so bad there. But still, can we truly trust Big Ben, the 38-year-old quarterback, to stay healthy coming into the season and play 16 games? I don't. You know, this guy's on the he's on the injury report every single week. You ever own this guy in a fantasy team or one of his wide receivers? You know what I'm talking about. Game day, questionable. Every single week, it seems. So, you know, 38 years old. You, do we think he's going to get healthier with age? I don't. You know, you look at the other elder statesmen at quarterback in the NFL. Tom Brady, Drew Brees. These guys don't get beat up as much as Roethlisberger. And they didn't really make any type of splash uh, with in the free agency or throughout the draft. Eric Ebron, a tight end, not really much of a difference maker there. So if Big Ben can't stay healthy again, what's going to happen? Mason Rudolph, Duck Hodges, baby. They're going to be in the exact same situation as they were last season. So another thing to factor in here for pittsburgh is i think that the division is better the baltimore ravens they're going to be good again guaranteed to get double digit wins at least so they're going to be one of the better teams in the league the cleveland browns you know i'm not really high on them again some people are taking the bait they should be a little bit better though you know a bag of old potatoes would be better on that sideline coaching than freddie kitchens was so you know maybe uh they'll finally get something out of uh out of all the top skill guys they have on offense, they should. And, you know, the Cincinnati Bengals, that's a team that can only go up. I think they really embraced tanking last year. And, uh, you know, Joe Burrow should be an upgrade at quarterback for them. And, you know, we're going to see a little bit better effort from the Bengals. So, yeah, I'm not very high on the Steelers coming into the 2020 season. I think they're getting a little bit too much love here based on their reputation. And the bets I like for them, under 9 wins, minus 105. And no, they will not make the playoffs, plus 155. My thoughts on the Steelers for the 2020 season. Let me know your thoughts, and we will see you next time in my basement. Woo!